Welcome to the video about mannitol salt auger, which we typically just refer to as MSA. This is an auger plate that includes additional ingredients. It's not just nutrients and auger. This also has things like mannitol and salt, hence the name mannitol salt auger. This media is both differential and selective. Now, we talked about differential media in the catalase video. So remember, with differential media, anything and everything can grow. It's just going to grow differently based on whether or not it can do something or if it has something. With selective media, only certain organisms can actually grow. Others are going to be killed, so there will be no growth of those particular organisms. So the organisms that can grow are selected for, and the organisms that cannot grow are selected against. So if you look at the name of this media, which ingredient do you think is going to be the selective ingredient, and which do you think is going to be the differential ingredient? Well, salt is something that kills a lot of microbes. We talked about salt as a way of controlling microbial growth, but it turns out that staphylococci organisms can tolerate salt. We actually find both Staphylococcus aureus and Staphylococcus epidermidis on our skin, right, which is salty because when we sweat, there's salt. So our staphylococci can grow on MSA, but our streptococci, for the most part, cannot. So the selective ingredient is going to be salt. So MSA selects four salt-tolerant organisms because they can grow, and it selects against salt-intolerant organisms because they cannot grow. So that means the differential component is going to be mannitol, which is a sugar or a carbohydrate. And so the organisms that are salt tolerant and are able to grow on this media, we're able to differentiate them based on whether or not they can ferment the sugar mannitol. So we are going to be looking for a color change. So you're going to see on the next slide that MSA plates are typically a light red color. And if fermentation happens, the pH of the media is going to decrease because it turns out that when fermentation happens, acidic byproducts are naturally created. So the overall pH of the media is going to decrease. It's going to become more acidic. And included in the media is a pH indicator. And this pH indicator is called phenol red. Under basic conditions, phenol red is more pink, while under neutral conditions, it's more of a red color. And under acidic conditions, it turns to yellow. So if we streak an organism on an MSA plate and it grows, we're going to be looking to see if the media remained red, which is going to tell us that the pH did not become acidic, so fermentation did not happen. If instead we look at the media and we see that organisms grew on the plate and the media turned yellow, we know that the organism was able to ferment mannitol because that fermentation released those acidic byproducts and the pH decreased, so phenol red turned yellow. So let's take a look on the next slide at what will happen if we streak certain types of organisms on an MSA plate. This first one is going to be what the MSA plate looks like normally. Now, if I told you that we streaked an organism on here, what is your observation going to be? Now, don't worry at the moment about the selective versus differential part. What do you physically see in this picture? Well, I see absolutely nothing. There is no growth. 
So what you always have to look at first is the selective side of the media. So in this case, the observation is going to be no growth. Let's see if I can get a pen to write this better. All right, so there's no growth. So would you consider this to be positive or negative? This is going to be negative. So what is our interpretation? What does it mean if we streaked an organism on this plate and it was not able to grow? This means that the organism is gram positive. Oh, that's not true. Hold on, sorry y'all. I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry, this is the problem with knowing what comes later in the unit. Okay, let's try that again. What do we know if the organism could not grow on a mannitol salt auger plate? This means that it is salt intolerant. I'm trying not to write on these captions here. And in terms of our unknown, we know that this is not a staphylococci because our staphylococci can grow. So when we're thinking about our unknowns for this unit, we know that we must have streaked one of the streptococci on this plate. Because remember, most of the streptococci are salt intolerant. Now, for the differential component, we actually cannot fill this out because we don't know if this organism can ferment mannitol or not because it didn't grow, right? If the organism is dead, it can't show us its ability or inability to ferment something. So for this part, all we can address is the selective component. Now remember y'all, observation is what you physically see. And then the result in this case is either positive or negative. That's it. Your interpretation is always the so what. So what does it mean that there's no growth? What does it mean that there's a negative result? And for this media, we know that the organism cannot handle salt. Now let's look at two cases where the organism can grow. So on this slide, take a second and think about what you physically see. First of all, when we're thinking about the selective component, we're always asking, is there growth? And in this case, there is growth, right? We have colonies. So I'm gonna go ahead, oh, I forgot to activate my pen. I don't think activating the pen really helps because I'm trying not to move where I'm talking so that my sound doesn't go in and out. Okay, so here we have growth. You could also say that you observe colonies, right? Colonies is the more science word for growth on this plate. So that means this is a positive result. This organism did grow. So our interpretation here is that this organism is salt tolerant. I'm just gonna abbreviate that. So because the organism grew, we can look at the differential component, which is whether or not it can ferment mannitol. Now remember, we cannot physically see that little sugar mannitol. It's microscopic. We cannot see the process of fermentation because that's happening inside of microscopic cells. So what can we observe? Well, when it comes to mannitol salt auger, we're looking for the color change. Is the media red or is it yellow? Okay, and I know it looks closer to pink, so you can write pink if you want. Basically, we're getting at, it's a shade of red. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put red here. If you wanted to put pink, that's fine. But we're looking at the color of the media. Okay, so this one didn't really change color. If you compare it to the picture on the last slide, it's still in the red family. So this means that, the, that no fermentation happened, right? So what is the result? Remember, our results are positive or negative. So if nothing happened, right, it's a negative result. And so this means that mannitol, again, I'm gonna abbreviate here to save time, mannitol was not fermented. Okay, this organism cannot ferment mannitol. 
So you might be saying, wait, how do I, how do I know that? Well, remember when fermentation happens, acidic byproducts are created. And so the media would become acidic. So the pH indicator phenol red, which is in the media would go from red to yellow. So because the media is not yellow, we know this is a negative result because the sugar mannitol was not fermented. All right, so now let's take a look at another option, another outcome. If we streaked a different organism on here, what are we observing? Okay, so I suggest pausing the video and trying to fill this out on your own and then coming back and listening to me. So remember, with selective, we're always asking growth or no growth. Well, I definitely see growth. So that's our selective observation. Growth is positive, and so we know it is salt tolerant. So for our unknowns, we know that we're dealing with a staphylococci, just like on the previous slide, right? There was growth. Our staphylococci can grow in the presence of salt. So now what's our differential observation? Well, we've already talked about growth, so what's the only other thing we can see? the color of the media. So the media in this case is yellow. And I always like to indicate what is yellow. Some people just put yellow, but it's always a good idea to say what you're talking about. So this is gonna be a positive result because we know that our interpretation, this so what, is that this organism can ferment mannitol. Because again, just for redundancy sake, when fermentation happens, the media becomes acidic, so the pH indicator phenol red goes from red to yellow. So when you see yellow media, we know the organism can ferment mannitol. Now, we've looked at two different plates that had growth, and we know that both of those plates belong to the group staphylococci because they are salt tolerant, but we care about this differential component because it allows us to differentiate between our two staphylococci organisms. And that's what I'm gonna show you on the next slide. So look at the far right picture first, please. So notice we have our two staphylococcus organisms, staphylococcus aureus and staphylococcus epidermidis. Remember, they are both salt tolerant, so you are going to notice growth in both halves of the plate. And that's good. That's how we know it's a staphylococci. But notice that we can now differentiate these two organisms based on their ability or inability to ferment mannitol. Staphylococcus aureus is able to ferment mannitol. So the media became more acidic on that side of the plate. And so the phenol red turned from red to yellow. Staphylococcus epidermidis cannot ferment mannitol. So that media did not change colors. It remain, remained that shade of red, okay? So now we can identify these two organisms pretty easily. But now let's look at what happens if we streak some of the streptococci on an MSA plate, most of the members of the streptococci group, we're looking at six of them, most of them cannot grow at all on an MSA plate. And that's the organisms that belong to the genus Streptococcus. So Streptococcus pyogenes, when streaked on this plate, cannot grow because it cannot tolerate salt. Remember I told you in a previous video that Enterococcus faecalis is an organism that is a member of the Streptococci group, but it does not belong to the genus Streptococcus because it doesn't behave like all those other Streptococcus genus organisms. And one way that Enterococcus faecalis is different is that it can tolerate some salt, but it can also ferment mannitol. None of the other Streptococcus organisms give this result when streaked on an MSA plate. Okay, so when thinking about the lab exam, 
it's good to remember that enterococcus is different. When streaked on an MSA plate, it actually looks like Staphylococcus aureus, okay? But all the other Streptococcus organisms cannot grow because they cannot tolerate salt. All right, y'all, that's the end of our discussion on MSA. Please let me know if you have any questions.